Hey everybody, Matt here. Today I'm going to show you how I made a second set of dowel gears. So I started by opening up LibreCAD. This is what the LibreCAD home screen looks like if you want to go and check it out. So what you see here is just a series of images of the various versions of the drawing for the dowel gear that I, I did. One of the things I really like about LibreCAD is that it's pretty intuitive to use. So it really is like a computerized pencil and piece of paper. It's very easy to just experiment with different ideas right on the fly. It's not too difficult to figure out how to draw with it. So that's what I did here before I finally settled on the design for the gear. So I knew I was going to drill a lot of holes in making these gears and I was going to use a backer board while I was drilling the holes to try and minimize the uh, tear out. So I wanted to start by sanding flat the backer board I was going to use while drilling. I decided I wanted to make the gears out of particle board, so I started by sanding the particle board flat. I wanted to have a nice flat surface to which to glue the paper template on for the gear design. Here I'm just taking a couple of printouts for the two gears I'm going to make. You just roughly cut them out and then go ahead and use purple glue stick to glue the templates for the gears onto the particle board that I just sanded flat. Here are the uh, paper templates for the two gears glued onto the particle board. Next I took a sharp awl and just made a little divot for the center of each hole that I was going to drill. Here I took my time and I was really trying to be as accurate as possible. Next, I just used the bandsaw to cut the two gears apart. Here I'm drilling the hole for the bearing that goes in the center of the gear. And so what I'm doing here is slowly low lowering the Forstner bit so that the center section of the bit finds the little divot that I just made in the particle board with the awl. I'm really trying to be careful here and be as accurate as I can. Once I get it all lined up, I turned on the drill press and press the Forstner bit through the particle board. Here's what the gear looks like with the hole for the bearing drilled in. Next, I started drilling the holes where the uh, dowel sections are going to get glued into. And once again, I'm lo slowly lowering the Forstner bit so that the center of the bit finds the little divot that I made in the particle board with the awl, trying to be as accurate as I can. You can see it's all done by eye. I'm actually wiggling the uh, particle board side to side to just verify that the center of the Forstner bit is indeed in the little divot made in the particle board. Once everything is lined up, turn on the drill press, drill the hole. Here's what the two gears look like with all the holes drilled in them. Next it was off to the bandsaw to do some cutting following the lines on the template that's glued onto the particle board. Still at the bandsaw, now I'm cutting the half inch oak pieces of dowel. With all the dowel pieces 
cut out. Now it's time to, to glue them in place on the gear. I'm using a rubber band to hold the dowel pieces in place. And I'm using the original tight bond glue to glue the oak dowel pieces into position. I'm using a silicon brush to spread the glue. The idea is to have enough glue on the dowel and in the crevice for the gear so I get good glue coverage and make a nice strong joint. If you haven't tried a silicon brush to spread the uh, glue, I do recommend them. You can get them from Rockler. Uh, it, it's pretty handy. When the glue dries on the brush, you're able to just remove it very easily and clean the brush. It's very convenient. Here you can see I've got all the dowel sections glued into both gears. Still using the rubber band just to hold them in place while the glue dries. Here's a shot of both gears while the glue dries. After the glue was dried, I could remove the rubber bands and, and take a closer look at the gears. So far they look good. Alright, now it's time to sand the dowels flush with the face of the gear body. You can see I'm doing it manually. There's maybe a sixteenth or so on the end of each dowel piece that I need to sand away so that the dowel becomes flush with the gear face. You can see I'm doing it completely manual. I'm using a piece of 80 grit sandpaper that's been glued on to a piece of half inch MDF and then I'm just simply scrubbing the gear on the sandpaper. Slow and tedious but it definitely works. All right, I'm getting near the end on this on this gear. What I do to remove the sawdust from the sandpaper is I just lightly tap the board on the floor and that helps to get the sawdust out of the sandpaper. You can see I'm reasonably flush here. So still sanding away. Here's another shot of sort of clearing the sandpaper by tapping the MDF board on the concrete floor of my garage. You can see it, it does, pretty, does a pretty decent job getting the sawdust out of the sandpaper. So here are the results after doing all that sanding. I was able to get the, the ends of the dowels reasonably flush with the gear face. Came out pretty well. Here's a shot of cutting out the material between the dowels using the bandsaw. With most of the material cut away between the dowels, now it's just a matter of chiseling away what's left. Just go slow and steady and uh, I can get right up to the line, make a reasonably good cut. This is what both gears look like after I removed all the material between the dowels. So here I'm just pressing in the bearings into each gear, just pressing them in by hand. It is a pretty snug fit as you can see, so it took a little bit of force to get the bearings in there, but I was able to do it.
Now for the test. You can see each gear spins pretty freely, freely on the 10 millimeter shafts. And here's what it looked like the first time I had the gears meshing. I tried pushing them closer together and you can see that some binds were created. So I separated them just a tiny little bit and it freed up both gears to spin. So here's another shot of the gears meshing. They're not perfect, but they're, they came out pretty well. Overall, I'd say the second set of gears came out better than the first. So improvement has been made. I think the next time I make these, I'll change the design a little bit and provide a little bit more space between the dowels so I can push the gears a little bit closer together and not have any binds. Thanks for watching.